equations. Those are the types of questions that we talked about recently in class. And we're going to use this from something probably back from middle school. And it's called the, I call it the dirt formula. Because if you look at that little formula right here, if you kind of look at it big, I kind of use it with, um, with um, what do you call it, capital letters. And so if you look like that, that little equal mark, if you put another little line down it, it's called, it would uh, look like an I. Anyway, the distance formula is distance equals rate times time. And we're going to look at this and use like a certain equation. And this kid named Garth is going to be going down a in a boat. And we're going to try to figure out how fast the current's going. So we've got to set up a little, a little, a lot of times you can set up like a little, uh, what do you call it, like a little chart, which makes it a little bit easier. So we're going to let x equal the speed in still water and c equal the speed of the current, just because you said so that you will know which one's which. So the main difference with the problems is the rate to be expressed using two variables, because moving upstream, the current is against you, and downstream, it moves with you. So when you go to look at the question, Upstream, first of all, we're going to fill in our little thing. It says, Garth can array five miles per hour in still water. It takes him as long to array four miles upstream as 16 miles downstream. How fast is the current? So he goes a lot faster downstream. So we're going to plug this in. I know it's down at the bottom, but sometimes it helps when I write it in. So it's 16 mil miles downstream in the same amount of time that it goes four miles upstream which makes you think that current's kind of going pretty fast, okay? Um, because in still water, he's just doing five miles per hour. And what still water means is there's no current or anything, like in a lake or something, not in a river usually, and he's just going five miles per hour. So we want to know what the current is. Now, so when we start to do the current, when we start to write that out, um, we've got x minus five. Well, that x, remember, is the rate in still water. So when we go to fill that in, it's pretty much like this one down here. So we've got the entire chart filled in, but the next thing that we need to figure out is we want to figure out the time. Now, if you go back up to the question, it says that Garth travels five miles an hour in still water it takes them as long, so it's the same amount of time. It takes them as long to ride five miles upstream as 16 miles downstream. So that basically means that the time is the same. So he does it in the same amount of time, which definitely is going to help us set up our equation. Because right here, we really don't have an equation. What we need to do is we need to figure out what they are in time and since the times are equal, what would we do? We would set them equal to each other. So this little formula right here is pretty much what we're, we're going to use. Because if we have that distance equals rate times time, if we wanted to figure out what our time was, we would divide both sides by the rate, which is basically like this is, except for they just wrote it in the opposite direction. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the distance, and there's not a whole lot of space here, so I'm going to have to write it to the side. The distance is equal to 5 minus c, because 5 minus c is the rate. Because when you're going upstream, you're going against the current, so the current slows you down. When you go downstream, you're going with the current, so the current's kind of going behind you and making you go faster. So that's the difference between the 5 plus c and the 5 minus c. So we get this. Now, a better way to write it is we're going to take these and we're going to set them equal to each other, just like this. Now, does that look like an equation that we've been doing? Yeah, it's a uh, rational equation. And what we talked about in class was you can always multiply by the least common denominator. So if we multiplied by the least common denominator, what's going to happen is our, um, our denominators are going to cancel, but this is actually a question because our least common denominator is 5 minus c times 5 plus c. But in these particular questions, it's probably just a little bit easier just to do cross products because what's going to happen is my 5 plus c is going to cancel over here. 
my 5 minus c is going to cancel over here. So we're going to get 4 times 5 plus c is equal to 16 times 5 minus c. Now when it gets to this point, we're kind of back to middle school, I, I kind of feel like. So you should be able to do your cross products, multiply them out, and I believe the answer is here. Yes. So we multiply them out, and we get the current is equal to 3. Now let's just think, and it's going to be 3 miles per hour. And when we talk about word problems, we need to tell what that number 3 means. So we need to do MPH, miles per hour. Now, if you think about it, 3 miles per hour makes sense because our current cannot be faster than the rate, than still water. Because if that was the case, you would not be going upstream, okay? You would be going, it would be pushing you the other direction. But anyway, so when you're looking at it, just make sure that when you get your answer, the current is not faster than how fast it's going in still water. Now, let's look at another one. A person swims 11 miles downriver in the same time he can swim 7 miles upriver. So downriver would be downstream. Sometimes they use different words. Upriver would be 7. So it says the speed of the current is 4 miles per hour. Now this is a little different because it says find the speed of the person in still water. So remember we let the rate of the person in still water be R and we let the current obviously be C. So if you remember upstream the rate has to be the the current has to be smaller than the rate. So when we go to set it up we're gonna have to do R minus 4 because the still water is going to be lar larger than the current. So then if upstream it's R minus 4 then downstream it's going to go faster so it's going to be r plus 4. Now we're going to set up these times because remember distance is equal to rate times time so time is going to be 7 over r minus 4 and 11 over r plus 4. So if we know it says it can do it they can swim in the same time there it is as they can swim 7 miles upriver then we know their times are equal, so we're going to set them equal. And all of these questions, most of these questions, they all end up the same type of thing. So we're going to set it up something like that. We could multiply by the least common denominator, but in this case, it's probably actually easier to do cross products. And you do come up with the same answer. So when we get to do this one, we're going to say 7 times r plus 4 is equal to 11 times r minus 4. So that's going to give me 7r plus 28 is equal to 11r minus 44. So at this point, then we're going to take the 7r to this side. 7. We're going to get 4r is equal to 28 plus 44 is going to give us, I believe, 72 and then divide both sides by 4. And if you don't have a calculator, just remember, you can always go into the side to do this. 4 will go into 7, it'll go 1 time, 1 times 4 is 4. You subtract, bring down your 2, and 4 will go into 32, 8 times, 8 times 4 is 32. So the rate in still water is going to be 18, and in this one it's miles, so it's going to be 18 miles per hour. Now, the other thing that you can always do in this, which sometimes I do actually like for you to do, and this might be a question that I'll ask you to do a little bit further, but if you know what the rate is, I could also ask you the time. How long would it take them to do it? So what, what you would do at that point is you would take your 18 and you would plug it back in. So if I plugged it back in to that top equation, I get 7 over 18 minus 4, and 7 over 18 minus 4 is going to be 7 over 14, which is 1 half, so that's 30 minutes, or a half an hour. And then if you did the same thing on the other one, you would get 11 over 18 plus 4, and that's going to be 11 over 22, which is also 1 half. So I might ask you to tell me how, what's the time that it takes you to do it. 
All right, let's look at the next one. And I'm kind of going to get through these kind of fast, maybe not go through every single step. But it says the speed of a boat in still water is 8 miles per hour. If it takes the same amount of time, see how a lot of them are very, very similar? To tap, travel 20 miles downstream, so my 20 would go here, 12 miles upstream. My rate, again, here is the 8 miles in still water. So basically what that means is the 8 would come first. So now we're trying to find the current again. So you always have to make sure you know if you're finding in still water or in current because the current always goes, goes last. Upstream would make it go slower. So 8, eight minus C. And then this would be 8 plus C. And then we're going to have to do an equation for the time, which is going to be 12 over 8 minus C. And then this is going to be 20 over 8 plus C. And you set those equal to each other. 12 over 8 minus C is equal to 20 over 8 plus C. And like I said before, it's probably easier just to do um, cross products. You can stop it right here to see if you can get the correct answer. But I went ahead and did it on this side and went ahead and did it so that you don't have to go back and like sit through the entire thing because I know that some of you get a little tired and don't watch things till the end. Here is where I went back and found the time. So after you found out, find out that the current is equal to 2 miles per hour, then you can take either one of these equations and take that 2 and plug it back in. So if I plug that 2 back in there, I get 12 over 6. If I plug that 2 back into here, I get 20 over 10. So the time for both of those is going to be 2 hours. Okay, so let's look at the next one. Uh, this one, we're trying to find the boat in still water. So you could set it up the same same thing. The speed of the stream is six miles per hour. I thought I actually had a different one. I think I actually, and here are the notes and everything that go along with it. So you can follow that. You can pause it at any time. I'm not sure if I moved it down so you could see the answer, but there's the answer, a little work that goes with it. Uh, also, if you come up with something like 3 and 11 twelfths, I am going to want you to write that in hours and minutes. And you might be a little confused as to how you can do it in hours and minutes. But there are um, 60 minutes in an hour. So you could go ahead and write that as 11 twelfths times 60 over 1. And that's going to change that to from 11 twelfths of an hour to 55 minutes. And yes, I will expect you to be able to do that. Uh, we're just going to go a little further. All of these are boats. And again, you can go ahead and look at this. And those are the answers. And I believe we also found time. And you had to change that one. That one's a little tricky. I probably wouldn't make you change it quite that, that ickily. I don't know if that's a word or not. But now we're going to do an airplane. So if the airplane is with the wind, and then you also have against the wind. Now, I probably should have put those in the opposite order, but I think I like stopped it. But with the wind is going to be pretty much like downstream. So if it's with the wind, it's going to go faster. And then against the wind is going to be like upstream. Now, instead of using a C, we basically use the R again for the plane and still air. And then for the wind, instead of using C, we use W, which makes sense. So a plane fly, flies 450 miles with the wind. So with the wind would be here. So we would do 450. And then against the wind, it travels 300. The rate, again, we're trying to find the speed of the plane in still air. So we're trying to find the R. And if it's with the wind, it's going to be R plus 29. And against the wind, it's going to be R minus 29, which makes sense. The rate is how fast you're going. So if you're doing minus, you're going to go less, less distance than you are if it's going to be R plus 29. So kind of see that that kind of makes sense to you. So this is that time. And then this one's going to be 300 over R minus 29. 
and I believe the work is, nope, I did not do the work, but you can kind of figure out, you're going to set those equal to each other, and if you still have some questions, we can go over that um, on Monday as to how to solve it at this point. I'm just trying to save time so I don't lose y'all. Now this one, a loaded moving truck traveling 20 miles per hour faster than a freight train, and the time it takes the train to travel 160 miles, the truck travels 240 miles. So if I were to set up the same thing in these, this little chart down here, although that's awfully small, um, instead of doing upstream and downstream, what we're going to do is we're going to label it as truck and train. So if we do truck and then we do the train, our truck ta travels a distance of 240 miles and the train travels 160. And it says that the truck is traveling 120 miles faster. So that's why that becomes 120. And then we just let the rate just be plain R. So when we set that up, um, we're going to set it up equal to each other. So it's going to be 240. 240 over R plus 20 and then 160 over R and then we can also do cross products now I also set it up this way because you could let the rate be the truck and then the train is going to be 20 20 miles per hour slower doesn't matter which way you set it up but this one's going to be 240 over R plus 20 unless you use the other one it's going to be 160 over R. And you should be able to solve it at that point. Just keep in mind that I might ask you to tell me what the, um, what the time is. Reciprocal is another thing that you're going to need to be able to do on this um, homework. And the reciprocal of a number, if I have the number 2, the reciprocal of that number is 1 half. So if I have the reciprocal of a number... A, the, the, a number plus the reciprocal of 3, the reciprocal of 3 is 1 third. Now these are very similar to the, the um, way that we solved them yesterday, well Thursday, and you're going to multiply everything by the least common denominator, which is 21x, and when you do see that you can see that I multiplied everything by 21x, everything cancels out, so the number, the uh, x value, which is here, is going to be x equals 7. And what I did over here was I just did a little check to make sure that if I did 1 7th, uh, I plugged in that 7, that I would actually get my answer. So I plugged it back into here and I did get 10 over 21. The other thing that you're going to need to know for the word problems are consecutive numbers. Consecutive numbers are numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, they're right one right after the other. And so if you're trying to write an equation, if it is a number, the reciprocal of a number plus and the consecutive number, I'm not sure if I said that right, but let's just say we have a number and it's two consecutive numbers and the reciprocals. So that'd be like 1 over x plus 1 over x plus 1. Now if it was even consecutive, it would be 1 over x plus 1 over x plus 2. Odd, which is kind of weird, they're also, when you think about it, they're two apart, it would also be x plus 2. So those are some little things, these last little things. Um, the number ones, you should be able to kind of think through those. They're not quite, don't really have a formula quite as much as the uh, distance equals rate times times ones, but I do expect you to watch this we're going to go over it pretty quickly on Monday, and we're also going to cover work problems. So if you want to kind of look that up before we do it, that would be a good idea. So um, I will see you tomorrow in our community, re community read. Um,